Over the past month, we went through a long history lesson over a subject that was long overdue. The Protestant Reformation is a movement that has influenced our modern world in countless ways, and we have all been influenced from it. It was important that we cover this topic because in order to break free from the lies and feel confident about it, we must properly be educated and informed. This is why I am so against our education system because even though there are so many people being educated today, receiving all these worldly degrees, amongst all these college educated people, we as a people know nothing that is of substance. People know what they are told to know and told how they are to think about it. That's one major reason why I don't really trust most people today that call themselves professionals. Education is pure indoctrination and it was not created to make us smart or knowledgeable, but made to be people that are easily guided and controlled. And so though we have all these people today who take pride in their education, it's also why we are the dumbest generation that ever lived. If you're offended by that, you just aren't in reality and you allowed yourself to get too much pride in your degree or your level of indoctrination. That's on you. Anyways, the point that I'm making is that we're not highly educated, but we're highly indoctrinated. And the saddest part is that even the people that we feel that we should trust to take care of us and lead us, they are only pushing what they are indoctrinated to believe in. It's the blind leading the blind. And the thing is that it takes a certain sense of humility to come to terms with this reality. Now here's the thing, as I speak about education and how false it is and how we deal with all these so-called professionals indoctrinated by the creators of our so-called system of spreading knowledge, in regards to these professionals, it's easy to recognize the dangers with gaps in education. And maybe some of us do look at these things a little bit more intently than others. But one thing we as a people definitely overlook and disregard is the knowledge and understanding of our religious leaders, our pastors and our church leaders. Today, influence in regards to the word of Yahuwah is not generally determined by biblical knowledge and understanding of historic fact. Having an understanding that can sift through major lies, being that we know that Satan will deceive the whole world. If we know that Satan will deceive the whole world, our religious leaders should be able to explain to us how this is being done. But this is sadly not the case. That is not how a biblical leader or pastor today gains trust and popularity. It generally is about how well of a speaker they are, or how many people of the world give them credibility, or how well they can entertain, like that guy Mike Todd who does the most ridiculous things to get a point across, even though his points are based in falsehood. But this is sadly the state in Christianity today. In order to gain credibility in the Christian churches, you need to have a Christian degree from one of these Christian institutions that are in charge of indoctrinating us. If you have successfully been indoctrinated, then you are deemed credible enough to be given a flock to shepherd and lead. And this is the basis of how Christian churches are built today as a majority. Again, it's the blind leading the blind. The truth is that the majority of these Christian churches, Christian pastors, Christian theological degrees, and so on, the majority of them cannot clearly break down how Satan has gone out to deceive the world. And guess what? If they can't explain this, what do you think happens to most of their flock that they are preaching, teaching, and shepherding? Yeah, you see, they know a lot about religion, a lot about doctrines and traditions of men. They even know about politics of today. Well, they know enough about their own party. But besides all that, they know very little about the truth of the scriptures, as well as knowing about and understanding the lies Satan has attacked us with in order to deceive the whole world. And because of this, people today, though they are well churched, they still are directly controlled and steered by Satan. Sadly though, they are too prideful and puffed up to admit it. Many of them, the reason being because they've gone to church for years and to them, they know the gospel. They think they know the gospel. So to them, they don't need to know all the other stuff, stuff like I talk about on this channel. What I'm saying is that Lack of knowledge has allowed Satan to deceive the world. And if we were properly educated and taught, most of us would not be so easily led astray and lied to, which again is the reason why we're so poorly educated and taught. So this is the reason why I took my time with the Protestant Reformation, because even though it is not one of those more provocative topics exposing satanic conspiracies, it probably is one of the most far reaching movements and events in our history that has influenced most of us and we know very little about it. And in order to understand the next layer of the lies, that layer needed to be properly dealt with, and now it has been. 
Before we move into more history, I think it is important to go over and highlight how this all was able to happen and transpire. And it all goes back to our indoctrination, what many of us like to call education. It is very important to really identify how it is that you have viewed our history since the crucifixion and resurrection of Messiah and when the apostles started spreading the good news about his kingdom. It is literally crucial to really understand the way the schools have taught us history and even the way the churches have taught us history. It's crucial to understand that it's been taught from a highly false and deceptive foundation that allows us to be deceived and unknowingly root and cheer for our enemy. Because we're deceived, we've been taught the story of our enemy. Being that we just went through a major point of history with the Protestant Reformation, it is important that from now on, as we look at history, our perspectives review history not just through the lens of simple people who merely have been influenced by that history, but in order to really understand this world, we must start looking at history through lens of understanding. Understanding how it all leads us to Yahweh's kingdom or how it leads others to Satan's. As we serve Yahweh, the question should be, how did his truth continue to go forth as well as how did Satan's lies continue to spread? In order for Bible prophecy to go forth and for a false satanic system to come about, a system that all worship the beast, this must mean that there is a very tilted scope of influence between those who worship Yahuwah and those who are being led to worship Satan. The fact and hard to hear truth is that most people in this world have been told a version of history in order that they are led to worship Satan and bear his mark. And yes, this does include Christianity. The history of Christianity is told to the masses in a way that people believe that the gospel that leads to salvation has been successfully spread to the world. They are taught to believe that Messiah successfully built his church through Peter. But this history is tainted, and we are told a falsehood that has led many into deception. What I am saying is how we view history is wrong. We must view it as a history of how Yahuwah scattered his children while preserving his word and his truth, while we also view the history of how Satan planted tares in order to lead people to a satanic kingdom. If you change your view of how you look at historic facts and events, while also looking at history in order to understand how Satan's lies have spread in order for him to be worshipped by the world, you will be better able to understand the world that you currently live in. Simply put, if you wake up from your indoctrination, you will not be led and steered into this coming Satanic kingdom. So we are going to talk about how, in hopes that many more wake up. Let's begin. Okay, so let me start with this first. It is important that you read your Bible. From the beginning of Genesis to the end of Revelation, all the books straight through. It is only this way that you would be able to really understand what the Bible is about. You cannot properly understand the New Testament without reading what we call the Old Testament. It shouldn't even be divided in this way, but that's another topic on its own. So if you read the New Testament first, while also matching what has been taught in these modern day churches, you will have a completely different faith than what is actually in the Bible. And unfortunately, this is the case for most people, even Christian pastors. Most of what Yahusha our Messiah says has a basis from the Old Testament, but most people don't recognize it because they never actually have read the Old Testament. The overall astounding truth is that most people have not read their whole Bible, and that includes most of these Christian pastors and influencers on social media. Anyways, the point I am saying is read your Bibles diligently. But as you are reading and you have now understood Yahuwah, our creator, you understand the covenant he made with Israel. You understand how they broke that covenant and he cursed them, scattering them and oppressing them, while prophesying of a redeemer and a king who will be a light to the Gentiles, who is Yahusha. And after you read about him and how he was not accepted by the people he was sent to and was later crucified, but then resurrects, and gives us the gift of the Holy Spirit, after you understand his sacrifice and then his apostles spreading the good news about his coming kingdom that he will reign over, then this is where things get a little fuzzy and a little choppy. So to bring clarity and clear up confusion, what is important first is to understand what has been done. I've explained this many times in different videos, but in order for there to be no confusion, I need to revisit this. It's the parable of the wheat and tares. Another parable he put forth to them saying, 
The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the grain had sprouted and produced a crop, then the tares also appeared. So the servants of the owner came and said to him, Sir, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then does it have tares? He said to them, An enemy has done this. The servant said to him, Do you want us then to go and gather them up? But he said, No, lest while you gather up the tares, you also uproot the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And at the time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, First, gather together the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them. But gather the wheat into my barn. It's Matthew chapter 13, verses 24 through 30. Continuing. Then Yahusha sent the multitude away and went into the house. And his disciples came to him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the tares of the field. He answered and said to them, He who sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. The good seeds are the sons of the kingdom, but the tares are the sons of the wicked one. The enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are the angels. Therefore, as the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of this age. The Son of Man will send out his angels, and they will gather out of his kingdom all things that offend and those who practice lawlessness, and will cast them into the furnace of fire. There will be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Matthew chapter 13, verses 36 to 43. This parable is truly remarkable and it's important. Understand that we are in the harvest right now. In order to really understand this, you must understand what tares are too. You see, they are indistinguishable from wheat until the final fruit appears. All those who are following his word and living for our father and his will are the sons and daughters of the kingdom. But you see, the devil has planted the wicked in the same soil. Remember, the soil is the world. The devil is sowing his tares amongst us. If you look at the world from a top view down, we would be the wheat and the wicked are the tares. Someone asked him, shouldn't we just pluck the tares out now? But he said, when you do that, you can uproot the wheat too. Farmers would pull out tares, but because they look like wheat, they would also pluck out the good too. We are all growing together, the righteous and the counterfeit. This isn't about those who are Satanists and working in darkness. The tares are counterfeit who look and act like believers, but in the end, they don't produce righteous fruit. We have all these different doctrines, all these false traditions, all these believers who say they love him, but side with the world more than they ever care about him. They practice the traditions of men before they ever turn to the word of Yahuwah for justification. They deeply offend those who are just preaching righteousness and living according to the word. These are the counterfeit. They look like wheat as they're growing, but in the end, they are not the same. Understand, when the angels come to gather the righteous, all those who offend and practice lawlessness will be cast into the fire. There will be wailing and gnashing of teeth, but the righteous will be good. They will be blessed. And so if you're going to understand the history of this world, it's important to have a better perspective of how you are learning about this world. In the past, if you have been under Christian doctrines, learning Christian history, most people that tell the story of the church today tell it in a way of power. They tell it in a way that shows what they feel is the power of Yahuwah. Basically, by their logic, because Christianity has been able to be spread all over the world over such a long period of time, it just shows the power of the church and the power of the gospel. That is the overall theme. But if you're now to review this overall perspective and understand that the people that have been telling you history, the people that we have been told about in our history books, these characters and events that have been given a lot of credibility throughout our history, and depending on who was telling the story, they were either heroes or villains. The overall story of how Christianity has been built up in the world is told in a way that gives people the point of view that it is put in place by the power of Yah in order to bring the world to the truth of the gospel. And this is the reason why Christianity is the dominant religion in this world. But if you change your way of viewing history and recognize that the history you are actually being told in terms of biblical truth is all actually reversed and you are only hearing about the history of the satanic side, you are only hearing the side about the history of how the tares have been planted, 
the history that you know is one that comes from the side of the weeds. Then you realize that you have been lied to and you have been fully indoctrinated in order to accept a satanically led and controlled world. All the history that is noted in this world and recognized in our history books, it's only told and it's only supported because it helps promote the satanic agenda of Satan being worshipped as the Most High. There's a better way to understand this. I think I mentioned this in another video a while back, but I'm not sure which one. But it's a good metaphor, so I'm going to review it again. The movie The Matrix is a movie that I like to use as an example of the false world that we live in. It's a movie that shows us that we live in a fake dream world that has been put in front of us in order for the rulers of this world to use us for our energy. And this movie is a great tool to use as a metaphor because they're telling the truth in a metaphoric way that only those who have been seeking to wake up really would understand. Now in this movie, among the many biblical references, like we have Neo as the fake messiah type who will save the world, and his woman Trinity, which references the mother goddess, a part of the satanic trinity, by the way, these movies are made in order to direct us to the Antichrist in the end. Neo, the hero of the movie, is actually the biblical Antichrist, the beast of revelation. But that's another point and direction. That's not what I'm talking about in this video. What I want you to think about is the character who's playing the devil, the antagonist character, the adversary. This was Agent Smith. I want you to review his goal because they literally told you the truth about what their plan for the world has always been and it goes back to the wheat and the tares. After Agent Smith was defeated in the first movie, he said he knew the rules and that he was supposed to get deleted. But something changed in him and he was compelled to stay and go about his business. So he did. And so as the plot developed in the end, what was his goal? He wanted to merge himself with every person in the Matrix so that everyone in the Matrix was a copy of him. He was a virus and he wanted to imprint his code onto everyone else in the Matrix. In the end, that's exactly what he did. The fact is that this is what the satanic agenda in this world is. Just don't look at it as a virus, but look at it as a weed or a tear. These tears that keep growing and keep getting spread in the field, which is the world. The world is filled with them. Satan desires to imprint himself into every human being so that they accept him. The doctrine of Christianity in this world has been told to us from a false perspective that we have been praising and rooting for tears. From the time that Rome made Christianity the religion of Rome, they have been a weed, a tear that has been planted in the field by Satan. And over the years, this tear kept being spread in the field, which is the world. It branched out, yes, and there has been changes over the centuries, yes, but it's still the same weed, the same tear. When the Greek Orthodox split from Rome, they feel they are different, but they're not. It's the same weed. When the Reformation happened and the Protestant church was built in Europe, there was a different name, and yes, there are different doctrines, and that's why they feel they're different, but they are not the root was still the same weed. When it gets to England, it's a different name, different doctrines, yes, but it's still the same weed. When it gets to the Americas and the missionaries want to take their doctrines and spread it all around the world, it's a different name, yes, but it's still the same weed, the same tear. It all comes from Rome as a root from the tears that Satan has planted, and this is how history has been told to us. And so as we now hear the history of the world, we want to hear about it as the history of how the church was spread, but it's actually the history of how satanic doctrine that will be used to make the world believe Satan is the most high, it's actually how this doctrine was able to be spread and believed. We are learning history from the wrong perspective, and because we are learning from our enemies who have pledged allegiance to Satan, we are learning to love our enemy and reject our hero. Too many of us seek to be controlled, seek to be under their influence. And so because we're so indoctrinated, we keep learning and learning. We keep attaching ourselves to falsehoods, but we never come to the truth because we have committed ourselves to a system that intends to draw us into worship of Satan. We don't know we have done this, unfortunately, but this is the world that we live in. This is the matrix. In our true reality of our life, compared to the metaphor of the matrix, Satan is Agent Smith, and he wants to imprint himself on every human being alive in some way. And the worst part in Christianity is that we can identify this with the other faiths. 
which is why you can't get an American Christian to condone with Islam because they recognize that it does not match the Bible. But they don't know enough of the Bible to recognize that they are a part of the same hypocrisy as Islam because the faith that is in the Bible, they don't actually know or recognize. Most people follow and believe in a social gospel that is all about themselves. It's about making the world a better place by using the doctrines or principles of Jesus Christ in order to steer the world into a better place for all. And when they die, they get to go to heaven because they believed in Jesus. This is unfortunately what most people believe. Most people don't actually understand the true gospel of the kingdom, nor are they preparing themselves for it. Basically, the truth that they believe is that if they believe in Jesus Christ, they get to go to heaven. And that's the sum of it. So before I get to the true gospel and what we are actually living for, I want to explain why I am making this video. I have gone through this hijacker series, going through the history of hijackers, and it has been a lot of history. And I understand that it can be a lot to take in and understand completely. I know how it is. It's like, yeah, you heard of these things like the Protestant Reformation, but you've just rationalized that you trust it all. But in reality, you know you don't really know too much about that history. And now that you're learning about it, it can overwhelm you because now that you know all this, what are you now supposed to do about it? Now that you're recognizing that everything that you've learned since you were young is a lie. It is very difficult with dealing with all this and sometimes the easiest thing to do is to retreat. Very much like the Judas character in The Matrix. He wanted to go back into The Matrix and not remember anything. He wanted to live in ignorance because to him, ignorance is bliss. So with all this information now being revealed and the whole premise of Christianity that you once believed, you are now understanding that the foundation is off. What should you do? It is important that you understand this now before we move any further with exposing these lies. I understand the difference with people that live in ignorance versus us who live in the truth. We become isolated. Our friends and family can think that we're crazy. We can often look like we're the enemies. We are the ones with targets on our backs because we will not comply and follow Satan. Yes, all of that is true and there's a lot more that comes with it. But it's important that you know a couple of things. The first thing is that if you commit to our Father in truth, he will provide you with a peace that passes all understanding. It is important that you do not only look at the lies without putting your trust and dependency on Yahuwah. We are told, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to Elohim and the peace of Elohim, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Messiah Yahusha. That's Philippians chapter four, verses six and seven. So understand, do not come into this just looking at the fact that you have been lied to. When changing your perspective, it's important that you recognize what is actually happening. You see, you're breaking chains that Satan has once locked you down through. You are breaking chains and being set free. Yahusha said, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. That's John chapter 8 verses 31 and 32. You see, the truth sets you free if you desire to be. So please first understand that the reason why all this was being broken down to you is because we have been trapped in a religious prison that is all about preparing us for Satan and to accept the mark of the beast. Your eyes are being opened so you do not fall for the traps. Think about the last major event in this world. All these Christian churches were not enemies of the agenda. They assisted it. They helped spread fear and they gave the agenda strength. I'm speaking about the majority. I mean, I still see people in the churches with masks on. People still advocating for unknown treatments to sicknesses they know nothing about more than what Satan has told them. I bring this up because ignorance is only good for a season until the satanic agendas start coming forth. I have a family member that before COVID, I was trying to explain to her about all these different things. She pretty much labeled me a conspiracy theorist. She said she didn't need to know all these things in order to be a part of our father's kingdom. And she rejected me and this ministry. When Satan started talking and spreading his fear, do you think that she was ready? No, she was not. She listened to Satan and followed his agenda. She was confident in her ignorance until things changed and Satan came for an allegiance check. You see, we are in a period of time where Satan's next allegiance check is coming and it will lead to the mark of the beast this next time. The last event seemed like a dress rehearsal. It is important that you wake up to the world that you're in so that you do not follow your enemy. 
I know and understand that we are in a short season where ignorance can seem bliss because we're living during times of satanic rebellion where Satan is preparing to draw everyone in. But if you do not wake up and come to terms about the truth in this world, you leave yourself vulnerable to be taken advantage of and led to accept the mark of the beast. There is a majority in this world that is not ready because they know religion, but they do not know Yahuwah. They know of the gospel, what they think is the gospel, but they don't truly understand what the good news is. They aren't preparing for it. Most people in the Christian church are preparing to be raptured, which actually, if you understand what the tears are, it actually fits them. Remember back to the scriptures about the tares? Do you remember who Yahusha said gets taken first? Was it the wheat or was it the tares? Yeah, the tares get taken first. They are bundled up and tossed into the fire. So all these Christians that desire to be taken first in what they call a pre-tribulation rapture, they are all following a false belief that is not rooted in the word, but just Christian dogma that has been spread over centuries. What I'm saying is that you must reevaluate how you have been looking at this world and understand that most of us who have grown up in their education system, watching their television programs and going to their churches, we have been deceived in more ways than we will be able to count. And we have been deceived to think that we actually understand what is in this book because we trusted man to teach it to us rather than for us to make it important enough to learn about it ourselves. And so as we have gone over this history, I know you can probably feel overwhelmed and maybe it's easy to blame me or attack me or just unfollow me. All that is your business and your choice, but I'm not asking for your blind allegiance. I am asking, actually, no, I'm pleading with you to read your Bibles like your life depends on it and let his word make your theology. Stop holding on to what you think you know and holding on to the rationalizations that you have made in your mind. I have made the Hijacker series going over the Protestant Reformation among many other videos in order to show you an important point that you must not ever forget. If you have grown up in the mainstream Christian church, there is a high probability that you have been playing for the wrong team. It's like a Mission Impossible movie where the enemy puts on a mask in order to make you think that you're following the good guys and you never realize this until he has gained his trust and you are no longer useful and then you're done. The truth for many people who have been blindly following mainstream Christianity is that the foundation that you have been influenced by comes from tares, weeds, tares that were planted by Satan that in the end will be bound up and tossed into the fire. All the history that you have accepted blindly all your life, all the church history that you think represented the good guys are actually tares. Just think about this. In America, the first Christians here were slave owners. The same slave owners were a part of the American Revolution that created this nation all the way until the Civil War. They were all Freemasons. They were Christians when they oppressed the Negroes and segregated them. They were Christians when they put on those white Ku Klux Klan robes and masks on. They were Christians when they violently oppressed people and justified it by a doctrine of white supremacy. This was and is Christianity. It's the same Christianity that Obama came under. It's the same Christianity that all the presidents come through. It's the same Christianity that politicians go to churches for and advocate their lies through. It's the same Christianity that advocated the solution and shut down because they did not feel protected. We are not apologizing for being the most conservative and the most cautious during this period. Piney Grove Baptist Church in DeKalb County says it's requiring worshipers to sign a waiver, get their temperature checked, and show proof of vaccination before attending in-person services. We said we were going to follow the science, not our emotions. Everybody wanted to come to church, but we were going to follow the science, and we did just that. This was and is Christianity. This is the Christianity in America and around the world. The same Christianity that colonized South America and Africa and Asia. This is Christianity. And the reason for the Hijacker series is to show how it all started. It all came from the same foundation that we see Martin Luther come from. And it gets even deeper when you realize who the people that they took as slaves and later racially segregated and oppressed, who they actually were. They oppressed and taught Yah's children how to follow Satan and be a part of a satanic world. And they did all of this while quoting scripture and spreading Christianity, which is why many people today do not want to accept the Bible. All these people will be judged for it. 
the world is seriously backwards, and it was designed to send all to hell who have let the iniquities from their bloodlines keep them down and spiritually attached to Satan and wickedness. I'm going over all this information so that you can properly wake up to the real world that you're in and open your eyes to the real reality in your face. If you love our Father, you must submit to the truth and align yourself to the true gospel. So with all that I've said, let's cover the truth. What is the true gospel? The truth is that our Father is going to bring back his chosen people that he has scattered amongst the nations. And those of Israel and Judah will be joined back together again and will live in Yahuwah's kingdom where Messiah will reign as king. The good news is that Messiah died for us and resurrected so that those who believe in him, whether natural branches of Israel or grafted in branches of the other Gentile nations, all who believe in him can all be heirs to the promise of Abraham and inherit the kingdom. You see, we are not trying to leave the earth. We want to inherit it. I will show you. For I will take you from among the nations, gather you out of all countries, and bring you into your own land. Then I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you shall be clean. I will cleanse you from all your filthiness and from all your idols. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and you will keep my judgments and do them. Then you shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers. You shall be my people, and I will be your Elohim. I will deliver you from all your uncleanness. I will call for the grain and multiply it, and bring no famine upon you. I will multiply the fruit of your trees and the increase of your fields, so that you never need again bear the reproach of famine among the nations. Then you will remember your evil ways and your deeds that were not good, and you will loathe yourselves in your own sight for your iniquities and your abominations. Not for your sake do I do this, says Yahweh Elohim. Let it be known to you. Be ashamed and confounded for your own ways, O house of Israel. Thus says Yahweh Elohim, On the day that I cleanse you from all your iniquities, I will also enable you to dwell in the cities, and the ruins shall be rebuilt. The desolate land shall be tilled instead of lying desolate in the sight of all who pass by. So they will say, this land that was desolate has become like the Garden of Eden, and the wasted, desolate, and ruined cities are now fortified and inhabited. The nations which are left all around you shall know that I, Yahuwah, have rebuilt the ruined places and planted what was desolate. I, Yahuwah, have spoken it and will do it. Thus says Yahuwah Elohim. I will also let the house of Israel inquire of me to do this for them. I will increase their men like a flock, like a flock offered as holy sacrifices, like the flock at Jerusalem on its feast days. So shall the ruined cities be filled with flocks of men. They shall know that I am Yahuwah. That's found in Ezekiel chapter 36, verses 24 through 38. But I'm going to keep reading more. Then say to them, Thus says Yahuwah Elohim, Surely I will take the children of Israel from among the nations wherever they have gone, and will gather them from every side and bring them into their own land. And I will make them one nation in the land, on the mountains of Israel, and one king shall be king over them all. They shall no longer be two nations, nor shall they ever be divided into two kingdoms again. They shall not defile themselves any more with their idols, nor with their detestable things, nor with any of their transgressions. But I will deliver them from all their dwelling places in which they have sinned, and will cleanse them. Then they shall be my people, and I will be their Elohim. David my servant shall be king over them, and they shall all have one shepherd. They shall also walk in my judgments, and observe my statutes, and do them. Then they shall dwell in the land that I have given to Jacob, my servant, where your fathers dwell. And they shall dwell there, they, their children, and their children's children, forever. My servant David shall be their prince forever. Moreover, I will make a covenant of peace with them, and it shall be an everlasting covenant with them. I will establish them and multiply them, and I will set my sanctuary in their midst forevermore. My tabernacle also shall be with them. Indeed, I will be their Elohim, and they shall be my people. The nations also will know that I, Yahuwah, sanctify Israel, when my sanctuary is in their midst forevermore. Ezekiel chapter 37, verses 21 through 28. Hallelujah. 
And this is how it is told in Revelation. Then I saw an angel coming down from heaven, having the key to the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. He laid hold of the dragon, that serpent of old, who was the devil and Satan, and bound him for a thousand years. And he cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal on him so that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years were finished. But after these things, he must be released for a little while. And I saw thrones, and they sat on them, and judgment was committed to them. Then I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for their witness to Yahusha and for the word of Elohim, who had not worshipped the beast or his image, and had not received his mark on their foreheads or on their hands. And they lived and reigned with Messiah for a thousand years. But the rest of the dead did not live again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he who has part in the first resurrection. Over such the second death has no power, but they shall be priests of Elohim and of Messiah and shall reign with him a thousand years. So Revelation chapter 20 verses 1 through 6. And this is all beautiful. Please know and understand. You cannot understand what is said in Revelation without first understanding what was prophesied in the Old Testament by the prophets. This is what we are waiting for, and in order to be a part of it, you must not and you cannot be steered by the beast, and you cannot follow false religion. This is a totally different understanding than what Christianity believes in, and if you don't believe me, ask any Christian what their goal is according to the Bible, and you will see that most people are just trying to get to heaven. So I hope this now makes sense. I have gone over the history so that you can thoroughly understand how the false foundations of this world have come together. It is important that you recognize the falsehoods and then break free from them. Don't find ways to fight for them or justify them. Break free from them. The majority of the world are following tears. A majority of the world are just following a virus that has spread in our minds for centuries. If you are a descendant of the slaves from the transatlantic slave trade, this is why they took our identity and made us forget our heritage and identity while reteaching us their version of our Redeemer. If you are a Gentile from these nations, you must wake up to the fact that you have been led by the enemy in order to continue and further spread lies and falsehoods. All of us must wake up together and live in truth. The truth of the gospel is for all who will believe and submit. So it has been important that lies have been broken down to you so that you can recognize the importance and need for a complete reevaluation of what you think you know so that you can be set free. We have been going over lies so that we can be ready for the way, the truth, and the life. When you live amongst lies, it's very hard to hear the fact that you are being steered by the serpent. In this near future, the lies are about to come very strong in order to get the world to worship Satan. And though it is hard to see now, I promise you, this will include a majority of Christians. This was proven by just what happened during that last pandemic. It is important that you wake up and live for the truth. And as Yahuwah allows, we will continue to shine a light on this false history that this world has led us to accept and believe in so that we can truly break free and worship Yahuwah with all of our heart, all of our minds, and all of our soul. If you make this your mission and goal for this life, we will all be ready and we will all come together soon as he calls us all unto him. Just make sure that you are ready. Be blessed. Hallelujah. Praise Yah. Okay. Thanks again for watching. If this has blessed you, please make sure to like it and share this video with others. If you haven't done so already, please make sure to subscribe to this channel. Yah willing, I try to upload every Friday. Also, please don't forget to subscribe to this channel on Facebook and Instagram, as well as on my website, truthunedited.com. As always, i like to thank all who donate and contribute to this ministry. Please know your donations are truly a blessing to the ministry and they help very much. I thank you sincerely for your love and your support and letting our Father use you. You are truly a blessing and I truly appreciate your support. There will be no way I've been able to read these books, purchase these books without your support. Be blessed. Okay, thanks again everyone for watching. I love you all.